thank you so much, all of you, for being here for Ada Lovelace Day. Ladies and gentlemen of Conway Hall, are you ready to science? Yeah. Now, when Lovelace finished her first draft of Note G and sent it to Babbage, um, unfortunately, Babbage lost a crucial part of it. And so Lovelace became not just the first computer programmer, but the first computer programmer to wish she'd taken a backup. All of the ways that we look for life at the moment tend to involve getting a little sample, baking it, and seeing what comes off it, uh, sniffing it with a spectrometer or something like that. Unfortunately, you have any perchlorates in that sample, and you heat it, and anything that's basically got carbon in it oxidizes, and you wouldn't be able to recognize it as life, even if it used to be. So in, in the act of looking for life, you destroy it. We're talking about what happens when you shine a white light through a glass prism. Um, the white light gets bent um, as it enters the glass and then again when it leads, leaves and you get this rainbow out at the other side. And that's because what we see as white light is actually made up of all the different colours of the rainbow. So you all look awesome right now, so I'm actually going to take a photo of this. Uh, I didn't appreciate quite how cool this would look. Uh, Everyone wave. People are just taking today to highlight a woman in science, maybe a famous one, maybe one that only they know, maybe someone who helped them become someone in science. And what's happening is checking and monitoring and trying to control all these weird and sometimes conflicting mechanisms and making the best of it. And well, uh, not always succeeding because we know uh, social life is very complicated so we have rules and regulations. Once you have a mathematical representation you can write nice algebraic equations to represent what those pictures are and uh, we can start looking at, since this is in three dimensions, we can start playing around with the space inside. Minor. The only time I've ever used my degree in my job, which was on the Channel 4 Drugs Live show earlier this year, where I made Jon Snow smoke cash and go in an MRI machine. <laughs> um, so, so my current job, the RI Christmas Lectures, we have no money for graphics at all. Everything has to be real. Um, but what I've discovered with this, and what I'm very much looking forward to, is sometimes when you have no graphics, all you need is something that goes bang. Uh, you still have a chance to tweet from the back of the room if you are, uh, yeah, take a photo as well. <laughs> very much. Um, so I am indeed a nanoscientist, which means that I can stand right in front of the projector and I'm the only person in our lineup of speakers that will not block the slides behind me. So if we take the average nanoparticle and compare that to a size of the football, you would be in the same kind of size comparison as comparing said football, if that were a nanoparticle, to the size of the Earth. I think that it's uh, a great opportunity to wish Ada Lovelace a happy birthday first computer programmer and Victorian computing visionary. Thank you very much.